Hey everyone, my name is Wedge and I am beyond pumped for this commander deck. You have no idea. As soon as I saw this warrior princess, I freaked out and began building. Now, oh geez, now I've created this masterpiece. So friggin' beautiful, I can't even stand it. If you enjoy five color commander decks that truly utilize all five colors, if you enjoy warrior tribal, if you enjoy a ton of legendary creatures, if you enjoy infinite combat steps, you will love this deck. Get ready for the most legit ride of your life. If you wanna see the list in full or purchase any of the cards for it at the cheapest prices, links in the description. I do hope you enjoyed the video, and if you do remember that that like button helps out a lot. <sighs> Najila the Blade Blossom is 3 mana for a 3-2 legendary creature human warrior. Whenever a warrior attacks, you may have its controller create a 1-1 white warrior creature token that's tapped and attacking. You can also pay 1 white, 1 blue, 1 black, 1 red, and 1 green, and untap all attacking creatures. They gain trample life link and haste until end of turn. After this phase, there is an additional combat phase. Activate this ability only during combat. All right. Najila's insane, absolutely stupid, insane. All the warriors you attack with create more warriors, including the warriors you've previously created. You just keep making warriors. Then a rainbow ability, there's no tap there. There's no limit on it. You can cast that forever if you can pay for it. Over and over again, infinite combat steps and all your warriors keep making warriors, which all get haste and lifelink and trample. Najila is brutality taken to the next level. She's bonkers crazy. And this deck is designed to abuse that combat ability as much as possible while also taking advantage of the fact that she cares about warriors. Welcome to the Legendary Warrior Tribal Deck. This is the real Gatewatch as far as I'm concerned. We don't need walkers up in here. Enjoy the mayhem. This deck needs warriors, right? We got some warriors. Say hello to some of our warriors. Zergo Helm Smasher, Yasoba Dragon Claw, Surak Dragon Claw, and Samet Voice of Descent. Sergo is a warrior beast who has to attack each turn anyways, which is something we're already going to do, and he'll get gigantic in the process. Yasova yeah, steals blockers, Surak gives everything trample, and our warriors can't be countered. Brutal. And Samet gives everything haste and can untap at a moment's notice since she has vigilance already. These are solidly powerful warriors that help our entire team. Of course, speaking of warriors, where would we be without good old Kresh the Blood Braided? In a deck full of 1-1 warriors, Kresh is going to perform like a fiend. Tokens die before they disappear, which satisfies the death trigger, so yeah, Crash is gonna go ham. If we're going to run a bunch of legendaries, some of them should probably synergize with what we're trying to do, right? Good thing we have some sick warrior support among our warrior legends. Sosuke, son of Sashiro, gives all of our warriors death touch, making them instant threats, even though one ones. Nath creates warriors by forcing your opponent to discard at random. Levisa turns all of your 1-1 warriors into 3-3s three with haste. That's insane. Totally broken in this deck. And Azuri Claw of Progress. Yeah, dude's a warrior. Gets so many experience counters, it isn't even funny. It doesn't have to be a command to do his job. Think about how many one ones you're creating. That's a million experience counters going on whatever you want, preferably a warrior that's about to get trampled in lifelink from Najila. Yes, it's so beautiful. In addition to our angry bunch of warrior support legendaries, we also have a contingent of legends that help with mass creature support and us just winning the game. Since we're massing so many creatures, Miri Weatherlight Duelist is key for wiping out most blockers. We get to dive in with our army and they can't do anything about it. Best part, on the swing back, they only have a single creature they can attack with because Miri will be tapped. Genius! Iroas forces awful blocks for our opponent and they end up killing nothing of ours, so that's a win-win. He isn't a warrior, but who cares? Dude's insane. Grimgrin is probably the most hilarious warrior in here. He eats the warriors you make to get huge and attack him for a bunch. Then Najila untaps him for more combat triggers and more death. It's friggin' amazing! Grimgrin is awesome here, and Brutal Horde Chief can just win games with his trigger. Even better, give your warriors death touch like we spoke about before. Then Horde Chief chooses blocks. Wrecked? What a slate of amazing creatures! I just, I love this deck so much. Can you tell? Let's say our opponents get lucky and somehow kill our legendaries. We have value beyond death. Veroz lets us scavenge them for remains, Cedrus, unearths whatever we've lost. That includes giant creatures with amazing triggers and abilities. So you know unearth is going to get its full value out of a deck like this, especially if you can get multiple combat steps out of the deal. And Alicia can bring back our fallen tiny legendary comrades for more mayhem and destruction. Best part, these three are all warriors. This deck is Legend Warrior Tribal, so we need some legendary support in addition to our warrior support. Enter Reiki, the history of Kamigawa. A legend himself, Reiki fuels us constantly. We're also running Thalia's Lancers because I don't say no to a legend tutor in this deck. Not now, not ever. Kanda's Banner will anthem our warriors and will anthem on color creatures. That's a nice bit of flavor tech right there. Then we get spicy. Primeval's Glorious Rebirth brings everything back from the dead. Time of Need is another solid tutor at an insane price. And Urza's Ruinous Blast, when you want to board wipe everything that isn't your heroes. Man, Dominary is hilarious. What a set. What a deck. What a game.
Moving back to warrior synergy for a second, we need a few more ways to create warriors. Now, Najila herself makes warriors so easily, and as you've seen, we have legends that do the same, so I'm not particularly worried about warrior creation from other sources. We don't need that much. However, we'd be silly if we didn't include Mardu Strike Leader and Secure the Waste in this deck. The Strike Leader makes two ones instead of one ones, and I like that quite a lot, and Secure the Waste is an instant speed army. You can't say no to an instant speed on tribe army, heck no. As we've seen, we're creating a lot of warriors. We're attacking with a lot of warriors. There will be a bunch of warriors on the battlefield, so let's make them even more dangerous. Adaptive Automaton buffs all our warriors. Bramblewood Paragon gives all of our warriors a plus one, plus one counter, and then subsequently gives them Trample. It's a nice self-synergy. Champion of Lamhole will get beyond Gigantic since warriors are entering the battlefield left, right, and center, which will give it near unblockable. Gross. Then we have Druid's Repository, which will help us cast anything in the world, including activating Najila's trigger over and over forever. Raider Spoils turns our 1-1s one into 2-1s, and when a certain amount of our warriors inevitably deal damage to an opponent, we can draw whatever we like. And since we'll be lifelink in a bunch, who cares about life? Not even done. Shared Animosity turns our warriors into game enders, especially since we have so many ways to give them all trample. Imagine coming in with 10 10 1 tramplers. You can kill multiple players at once. It's so awesome. We then have Rush of Battle for a huge anthem effect for everything we have, and Lifelink for all of our warriors, aka all of our attacking creatures. That'll be like 20 or 30 or 40 life at once. Then we're running Obelisk Avert and Door of Destinies. Both make our warriors stupidly big. Both are necessary in this deck. Both are really fun in multiple combat situations. Why is is this deck so amazing? I can't even right now. <laughs> So now we have a bunch of legendary warriors, ways to make legends huge, ways to make warriors huge, ways to create more warriors, and ways to help them get in for tons of damage, and we're still not done with synergy yet. We have a handful of pro warrior cards in this deck, but they are much more focused. Arish and Foremost grants double strike to another warrior until end of turn, which is super important if we have multiple combats. Bloodshin Fanatic gets better and better as the game goes on, because your warriors will be 3-3s three instead of 1-1s, one -one, sometimes even bigger. The Fanatic can dumpster opponents while keeping your life total safe. The Intimidator turns your warriors unblockable against the biggest threats out there for a single red mana each, disturbingly good. Then there's Bright Hearth Banneret that cheapens all of our warriors, Skull Clamp that lets us pay one mana to draw two cards over and over again because, you know, that card, still somehow legal in Commander, hilarious, and Gate 2 Encampment which functions as a fine red source but is a 2-1 warrior with first strike when we need that extra attacker, it's nice. Najila's combat ability is something we need to focus on for a second. It's the only reason this deck even remotely works, and the main reason I chose her as my new commander to begin with. It's time to combo out. Bear Umbra untaps all of your lands on attack. That's a bunch of free mana forever. Nature's Will, a card many don't know about, only needs a single 1-1 one -one to deal combat damage to a player to untap all your lands, giving you even more combat steps. Best part, you get to use this after combat damage is dealt, but before the combat phase is over. There is a post-damage step in combat, so yeah, this works. It doesn't give infinite triggers, but Illusionist Bracer will double up your combat nonsense. Then we have ways to generate enough mana to get multiple combat steps going. Grand Warlord Rada creates a bunch of mana for you to use, same with Sakiko, Mother of Summer. You can funnel this mana into Cascading Cataracts and redistribute it as Wooburg, allowing you to activate Najila's Broken Trigger. There's so many ways to get this thing to work. With all the methods we have here, you're almost never attacking with Najila a single time. It's, it's glorious. We need a bit of interaction because the warriors can't do it all themselves, sometimes. We have to take advantage of the five color flexibility available to us. We're running Crackling Doom, Mortify, Swords to Plowshares, and Utter End. A solid quartet of powerful removal spells that will help our warriors get the job done. These are joined by a trio of protection spells I'm sure you've seen plenty of. Boros Charm straight up protects our creatures from a board wipe, that is its only purpose in this deck. Then both the Greaves and Boots are designed to keep Najila alive to get infinite combat steps, solid support spells if you ask me. You may be asking yourself, how are we going to cast all of this five color craziness? These colors are all over the place. And to that I would say, you're right, it is crazy, which is why we're running a disturbing amount of fixing and ramp. Boros Signet, Selesnia Signet, and Gruul Signet are joined by Coalition Relic, Felwar Stone, Gilded Lotus, and Soul Ring. Artifact Ramp and Fixing at its finest. We include the Signets we needed the most, then Easy Color Fixing Artifacts, and the Ring Ramp. Of course it doesn't end here. We're also running Cultivate, Explosive Vegetation, Farsi, Kadama's Reach, and Rampant Growth. With all these spells, in addition to the land spread you'll see in a moment, we haven't had any real problems casting anything. Of course, sometimes it can be kind of awkward, but with so much fixing, you really don't notice. It's gosh darn funny.
our land spread has to be optimal for a strategy like this to work, and that's why I spent a lot of time on it. We're running Rogue's Passage as our only utility land. This is useful to get combat damage to player triggers through. It's great to make sure Najila gets in without being blocked and killed all around fine. Then we're running City of Brass, Command Tower, Exotic Orchard, Path of Ancestry, and Rupture Spire for potential five color needs. Good flexibility there. After that, say hello to 10 Trilands. Sanctum Necropolis, Bivouac, Shrine Monastery, Outpost Palace, Citadel Lands, Citadel Mark II. So many Trilands, all of them good all the time. Round that out with Evolving Wilds, Terramorphic Expansion, six forests, four mountains, three plains, three swamps, and one island, 37 lands, beautiful rainbow of goodness. Now I'm sure some of you, like me, have fallen in love with this list already. How could you not? It's amazing. But maybe you want to take it a step further. Maybe you want some upgrades. Oh buddy, do I have news for you. The deck we just looked at, it's around $150, and great. Here are some upgrades to spice it up if you want to. Primal Vigor, Parallel Lives, Doubling Season, great support spells, obviously. Mox Amber is actually sweet in this deck since you're running so many legendaries. Path to Exile for removal upgrades. Mana Confluence for mana upgrades, same with Reflecting Pool. If you want to upgrade the legendaries, Captain Sisse is a good place to start. If you have a billion dollars, Hazazan Tamar, best warrior producer in like all of magic, also a couple hundred dollars. Risk the Redeemed is strong as well, but expensive. And finally, Chromatic Lantern for more fixing, Metallic Mimic for more tribal synergy, Sword of Feast and Famine for more combat phases on Najila because LOL. And I forgot about Cyclonic Rift, but I mean that card is dumb and we're trying to play Magic the Gathering here. Najila the Blade Blossom is a disturbingly fun commander. This deck feels great to play. All of the cards in it are fun to use and it makes you feel like you're playing peak Magic the Gathering. And for $150 total, I gotta say, I've already had more fun than it cost. If you have the opportunity, you should try it out. It's one of my favorite decks I've built in a long time. I adore Najila, I adore the deck. If you wanna see the entire list or purchase any of the cards for the cheapest prices around, you can click the link in the description. If you choose to build it, you will not be disappointed. And as always, thanks for watching. And we We'll see you next time. This video is brought to you in part by TCGPlayer.com. Najila is the real deal in Commander. I think I love everything about her. You can get your copies on TCG Player ordered right now for only $8 each. Pretty good deal considering how popular she already is. And the set just went through a pre-release event. Go nuts, live the dream. Click the link, get your warrior tribal goodness. It helps the channel. We all win. Enjoy.